Hi everyone, so drum roll please. I am launching my very first ever makeup product. I'm launching a limited edition lipstick. This is the packaging. I'll show you the box and everything else in a, in a little while. Um, the, this is a true velvet lipstick. And what I actually mean by that is that the lipstick bullet actually looks like a real piece of velvet fabric. When I show this to people, the first thing they say is, wow, and the second thing is usually how. And it has been quite a difficult process. This is a brand new mold. It's a, this has never been attempted before. It's, lip, it's velvet made out of lipstick. So each little filament, each little piece of fabric that you have within velvet has been recreated here with lipstick. So why have I only done reds? I've done three reds, all completely different. I think the reason for me is that red and velvet are so entwined, I think, in my imagination. I was thinking of things like theatre chairs, vintage theatre chairs, or amazing Hollywood starlets in their red velvet gowns, and classical paintings and velvet drapes, and it's always red, I don't know why, but I just thought red and velvet, they just, red just lends itself so well to velvet that um, I really wanted just to do three reds. So I've done three completely different reds. The first one, this is the one I'm wearing today, is Velvet Ribbon. And this is a real bold, true red, true neutral red with a hint of blue. And the reason I called it Velvet Ribbon is because when I think of that kind of red, I always think of a bow. I don't know, a kind of red ribbon tied in a bow. So that one is Velvet Ribbon. Then there's a really deep, bricky red, and I've called this one Velvet Jazz. The last one is Velvet Morning, and this, the colour is very much inspired. It's a real hot, firecracker, vibrant, orangey red. And this one for me was all about that morning, you know, when the you're in a tropical place and it's the sun is rising and you get that really vibrant, orangey red colour on the horizon and also I do love the Nancy Sinatra song Velvet Morning. So the actual formulation is a creamy lightweight matte. It feels incredible on the lips because it, it is very lightweight and it feels hydrating and the finish is it's matte but it has an imperceivable subtle sheen like velvet fabric when it's kind of moving so it's not one of those really dry down mattes which I actually do love using when I'm on photo shoots but when I personally wear them myself I find them too drying on my lips and I don't like the feel of them so this is a matte with hydration. First thing to say is when it's on your lips, it's not actual velvet fabric on your lips. I know that's really obvious, but I did show it to somebody last week and they started to rub the side because they thought it was actually velvet, which is a big compliment, but they rubbed and rubbed and they made a big mark down the side of the lipstick. And then they were shocked and I was like, it's it's velvet texture made out of lipstick. So I know that's really obvious, but I am just gonna say that here. So the actual top of the lipstick there is, doesn't have the velvet texture, so it's more that that's where you will apply from. It's definitely a one swipe job. So I'm gonna take it down a little bit. So I'm gonna use it from the top. So I haven't done a good shape there, but you can see it really is a one swipe full coverage, full saturation, and you don't actually need to use a lip brush, sorry, a lip pencil if you don't want to, because you can create the shape yourself, either with a lip brush or you can put it straight on from the bullet if you've got good lip shape already. You know, I always like to tweak mine, so I'll just show you how I tweak with um, the product on a lip brush.
So you can see that a little bit of product goes a long way. I'm just tweaking away at my shape now. And it feels like I'm not really wearing any lipstick. It's got a very smoothing feel. And one of my pet hates about matte lipstick is that yes, it does last a long time, but when it wears off, it wears off into the cracks of the lips. And I hate that because I've got dry lips anyway. And I hate it when I go out and I see that. This formulation, I promise you, it does not do that. We've tried it out on so many people, all my friends, all my family, everyone I know has worn it for at least four nights out. Ones that involve eating, ones that involve dancing, ones that involve long nights out. And what it does is it just wears off gradually and you're left with an even smooth color. So it's, it's, that was a real something that I really wanted to make sure it did. It lasted a long time, but it didn't go dry and cracky. Now, if you want a stronger edge, a harder edge, of course you can use a lip pencil as well. And what I'll do is I'll put on my website recommended lip pencils. I'll, I'll look for the most popular and widespread brands so they're easy to get that go with the each each of the three shades. So I'll make a few suggestions of ones that I think match really, really well. Oh, and also while I'm on the subject of what goes with the lipstick, for the blush, now the previous color, which was the blue red velvet ribbon, I had this blush on. This is what I've got on now, which is a very blue pink. This is Sigma pink. For this color, because it's so corally and orangey red, I'm gonna use Hey Coral Hey by uh, MAC for this one just to give it more of a, we've already got the um, the pink underneath, so it's not accurate, but just to give it a little bit more of a corally vibe. So I've cleaned off my lipstick and I've just freshened up my base. So I want to show you now Velvet Jazz. And this is the color that I mentioned was more of an earthy brick red. I really wanted to create a color like this because very often within ranges you get all of the reds and then as they become a little darker over the sort of top they become very blue or purple so they tend to go berry straight away and I really wanted to do this kind of bricky red firstly because a lot of the vintage lipsticks in my vintage collection from the 1930s and 40s they tended to be more of these brick reds and I just love that colour. In a way it's the most natural of the three lipsticks I've done which I know you'll think she's mad because it looks really dark in the tube but it isn't, it's a real chameleon this colour. It just, it can look so different, not just depending on skin tones, that's obvious, but also how you apply it, the light, it's it's just one of those shades that is, is to me a real chameleon shade. And I'm going to show you the colour it was based on and this is a 1930s lipstick from my collection and I'm gonna just dip into this this there's quite I don't normally damage my vintage makeup but this one's got a lot left in and it's um oh yeah it's got that smell so let me just show you ah oh, it's thick it's like glue <laughs> so I'm just gonna pop that on there and then show you next to it velvet jazz so you can see it's just got more of that earthy brickness so the effects you can get from this color really depend on how you apply so I'm going to show you because it is quite um, I don't know some people might think oh it's too dark or I can't really wear that kind of color or you know it's I just I feel like I'm going to be so out of my comfort zone I'm just going to show you different ways because this is the way I've been I've been wearing this color a lot recently but I've been applying it just with my fingertips So just as a really soft, almost blurred matte stain. It still feels moisturizing. And if you wanted, you could always add, you know, a balm or something on top, but yeah, it still feels good. And then you can just build up. And when it's like that, it's really quite a soft red. It looks a little, the undertones really depend on the skin tone you have. So I'm seeing a little bit of the blue undertone, but I'm also seeing the warmth. It's sort of right in the middle. It's almost not too yellow, but it's not blue either. It's got that, 
guess there's natural colour to it. I'm actually going to put a little bit of that on my cheeks as well. I'm going to use my foundation brush that I just used. Use my fingers as well. I mean, don't feel that you have to use it on your cheeks. I just, as you know, anyone who's watched my videos know I always like using lipstick on cheeks. Especially if you just want to get a quick look together and you want your cheeks and lips to have some kind of a harmony and sit together nicely. So that's Velvet Jazz if you just do a, a nice stain, very natural. That'll be a really long wearing stain as well. So now I'm going to apply it much thicker. I'm going to go for the full on lip. I'm going to now do my lip shape. When I wear darker colours, I always overdraw a bit more because my lower lip is quite thin. And when I wear dark colours, which I love wearing these colours, but I over I compensate by making my lower lip a little bit bigger than I would normally and the sides of my upper lip as well. So just in there just gives me a little bit more fullness and definitely along the lower lip line. That's just giving me a little bit more volume but because I've done it with lipstick it's kept it looking quite soft. So I'm just going to blot. I'm going to show you another look with it. So you could just blot and that's a more matte version but it still has that softer edge. Or you could then use a lip pencil. I found two in my kit. One is a Lipstick Queen which is exactly the same colour pretty much. And then there's a Rimmel one. This one is bluer but both could work. Um, I'll list them on my, on my website. I'm going to use the Lipstick Queen one. And that's the Velvet Jazz look on me. And if you go to my website, I have this colour on various different skin tones so you can see how it translates. So I'm now going to show you Velvet Ribbon as a stain because it is such a full-on red. And if you feel self-conscious wearing this type of colour during the day or you're just not in the mood for it, it does work beautifully as a stain. So it just gives you that real rosy, rosy look. I'm going to pat it on. I'm going to use a touch of that on my cheeks as well. So it's just really fresh and rosy, this colour. This colour just suits everyone. I've had so many the last couple of months, so many friends wearing it, so many testers, people have been trying it out for me and everyone is just in love with this colour. It is a real classic, universal red and because it's got that nice bluish tint to it. It's good for the old teeth as well. So that's how it looks as a stain but of course if you've got an amazing red then I always like to go all out as well. So I'm going to show you how it looks when it's all over. Oh, I love the velvet effect. It just looks so beautiful. I think it's slightly mixing with all that can, that foundation. I've just tried to get rid of the colour out of my lips. This time I'm going to go straight in with a lip pencil. I'm using Bobbi Brown Red, which is a classic red and great for this lipstick. I'm going to create the shape and then just buff around the edges. 
once you've finished your red lips then you can think about your blush if you're doing a really strong color with any of these three shades i would recommend that you do the blush after you've applied it um, particularly if you're doing it you're putting it on as a full-on color so once the color's on then you can judge if you do the blush first you'll either put on the wrong shade or it will just look either too much or it just won't be right whereas if you've already got the color on I'm actually going to use, this is Chanel Rose Initial. I'm choosing this because it's not too blue or pink. It's like a sort of mid-toned warmish pink. You can see it's just kind of bringing the lipstick, just warming up my face, but without overpowering the lipstick. I'm actually going to add a touch of highlighter as well because I love highlighted skin with red lips. This is the top of my cheekbones. So that's my finished velvet ribbon look. And I don't know if you can notice there is a tiny, the tiniest sheen on the lips. It's matte, but it has. I guess a healthiness to it you don't it doesn't it's not a flat flat dead matte where you see the lines and things in the lips it's quite plumping and um, I personally love it but if you prefer to have a matte which doesn't have any sheen whatsoever or any kind of luminosity then just take a tissue and just blot once It'll just take off the surface of the lipstick, but it won't affect the colour. Well, I will mention while we're at it, while I'm holding them, the packaging. Um, lots of people have said to me, oh, I can't believe you haven't done vintage packaging. You haven't like copied something in your collection. And um, there's two reasons why I haven't done that. Firstly, because I have created this effect on the outside of the bullet, this, this illusion that it's sort of real velvet, that in itself feels like enough of a thing. So I didn't want a fancy packaging around it, which would just be too much. So I wanted something that was chic and simple around that. And also because one of my thing about, I don't know, when people say about, oh, it's vintage inspired packaging, I always think, well, all of the things I have in my collection, all of the things that I'm really obsessed with and most proud of from my the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s are brands that created something new then for the era or something of that time. You know, I don't collect 1930s makeup brands that were inspired by redoing Victorian looking makeup. Um, what I like about them is that they were forward thinking and quite modern for that time and that's why they have stood the test of time really so i wanted something and this is just for this limited edition so you know this is not necessarily going to be i'm not doing this packaging again it's just for this this one-off limited edition um, my monogram will stay the same for anything else that i do but the packaging this is just a one-off for this velvet lipstick and um, i love it i just think it's so chic so modern so simple and it just feels really, really nice. It has a, it's quite a heavy base and it has a nice magnetic um, closing. If you have a few of them together, they all start repelling each other, but um, it just feels, it feels quite substantial. So just to recap, this is a full pigment, saturated color, creamy matte lipstick. It feels lightweight on the lips. It's long lasting, but it doesn't dry. It feels hydrating. And then it has this, special effect if you like on the outside which I think is amazing but I would say that but it is like it's almost I found it so hard to photograph and represent you almost have to see it with your own eyes because it just has this magical trompe l'oeil effect that just makes the color look so much more deep and saturated and, and just yummy so the actual box looks like this so it's white with my name on in gold which is so amazing to see my name on a makeup product i can't tell you how i'm overwhelming that looks they are available individually 
or I have a gorgeous set of all three lipsticks that comes with this makeup bag. So I've done a limited edition, beautiful plush velvet makeup bag. Oh, and I nearly forgot to say something really, really important to me. This is a 100% cruelty-free product. No animal has suffered for this lipstick. So thank you for watching. I can't believe I've just made a video about my own makeup product. It's so overwhelming. Um, I've been designing makeup for all the big brands for my whole career and now I've got something that's got my name on it and it's my own thing that there's no one backing me. This is just my own thing that I am doing on my own and I feel very proud of what I've achieved and I just want to thank you all and thank you for watching.